Hey everybody, what's happening? Tim Warner here from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Exam Review 7332 Advanced Solutions of Microsoft SharePoint 2013. In the next few minutes, I want to give you a clear picture of what to expect from this certification exam. For instance, where does Exam 7332 fit into Microsoft's certification portfolio? You're probably dying to know how many questions are in the exam, what the passing score is, what kind of stuff you'll be asked. Now, of course, I have a non-disclosure agreement to uphold between me, the test taker, and Microsoft, and I'll do that. But I'll be as specific as I can because forewarned is forearmed for sure. And to that point, I want to give you a few content-related gotchas. If you want gotchas related to the exam's case study format or specific tips regarding interactive items, I've covered that in my exam 7331 review. So check the CBT Nuggets blog as well as the CBT Nuggets YouTube channel because for each one of these exams, I'm doing a written blog post and a YouTube video. Let's get started. First, recall that 7332 is part of the MCSE in SharePoint, the Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert. And the solutions word is important here because Microsoft tests not only with what it considers to be the advanced competencies of SharePoint Server, but also you'll be expected to know a great deal about PowerShell, SQL Server, IIS, Certificate Services, ADFS. There's a whole lot. Exchange, Project Server. I mean, I could just keep going on and on and on. The bottom line is, when you go to the 7332 exam blueprint page, Microsoft is not lying when they show you those competencies that you have to know. If I were to pick out the two most important focus areas, it would be disaster recovery, which is how to back up and restore SharePoint assets and SharePoint farms, and the concept of upgrade migration. You're starting from 2010 and you're migrating to 2013. What can go wrong? How do you want to approach it? And so forth. In terms of the core metadata, we're looking at a case study exam. Actually, the structure of 7332 is functionally identical to the 331 core solutions exam, where you have approximately five case studies with approximately five questions per case, and you'll also have a standalone bank of questions that are not associated with cases. Microsoft gives you over two hours to complete, which you'll need, believe me, you'll need that time. You can navigate back and forth among questions only within each case or within this standalone bank. Once you've moved on to a subsequent testlet, the only time you'll see previous cases is at the end when you can leave comments for Microsoft. The passing score is 70% or 700 on a 1000 scale, same as any other Microsoft IT Pro exam. And besides the case study format, which definitely can throw you for a loop if you're not prepared for it, be prepared for lots and lots of interactive items in addition to the traditional multiple choice single answer multiple choice, and multiple answer multiple choice. Now here's an important pro tip for you. Microsoft Learning has some YouTube videos where they walk you through the case study format as well as how their interactive items work. This is a screenshot from that YouTube video and it's really helpful because it can get you not being so shocked when you walk into the exam room. Now I presume that you've already passed 331 so this screenshot should already look familiar. Basically, you can toggle between the case and the current question you're dealing with. You'll see question X of Y in the upper left. The live cases that are in the exam actually have some additional buttons where you can jump to specific areas of the case. Now, the cases in 332 I've found are much longer than 331, so I definitely recommend you get your sea legs, so to speak, by passing the 331 test first before tackling 332. Now, to the point of those interactive items, you're looking at the following kind of stuff. Drag and drop and build list and reorder. A drag and drop is basically a matching exercise. Build list and reorder is where you're asked to select from a number of content blocks, choose however many are appropriate, and then put them in the correct sequence. The bottom line here is that you'll see lots of these questions that test your ability to understand processes. If you aren't very familiar with how to do stuff in SharePoint, you won't pass this test. I suggest if you've used my CBT Nuggets course, spend time in the virtual labs, build yourself a practice lab environment, 
and go through every procedure a couple times yourself using both central admin as well as PowerShell because believe me, you're going to need it. Place the target is where you're shown the central administration interface or a dialog box and you click in the appropriate area. You'll also see a lot of what I call Mad Libs fill in the blanks where you'll see sentences that have spaces in them and you have to drag out the appropriate words. Those can be very, very difficult and require good reading comprehension and critical thinking skills in addition to your SharePoint knowledge. Other content related gotchas. I already told you about the cases being longer. You're going to be tested on non-trivial PowerShell. Now it used to be with the Windows, well it is really, for the Windows Server test you're basically just asked to identify a commandlet. That is what I call a trivial PowerShell exam question. Here though you're actually asked to use PowerShell in more than one statement where you'll need to create a reference to an object and then access the members which is to say the properties and methods of those objects in order to pass. So it's no longer enough I should say to simply recognize an appropriate PowerShell commandlet. You need to have put some mileage on so to speak in using PowerShell with SharePoint. You can get there by practicing with my course. You'll also if you're a CBT Nugget site member want to check out Don Jones training in PowerShell for general knowledge and my colleague Garth Schulte his SQL Server 2012 stuff as well because you do have to know quite a bit of T-SQL and SQL Server especially as it relates to backup and restore in order to be successful on this exam. As far as TechNet library stuff Know the TechNet pages on upgrade migration from SharePoint 2010 cold. Also, search TechNet and read up on backup and restore techniques until they're absolutely second nature to you. My parting thoughts to you are stuff that for the most part you should already know. You can register for your exam only through Prometric.com at the Microsoft vendor page. Be on the lookout for exam discounts. If you're an MCP or an MCT, you may qualify. I'm an MCT, so I get a 50% discount. That's a great savings when you consider that these exams are $150 US dollars per attempt. I already mentioned that I would suggest you do 331 first. You can do 332 first. It doesn't matter. Actually, you can do your SharePoint tests and then do your MCSA in Windows Server, or you could do your MCA first. MCSA first and then do your SharePoint. Microsoft doesn't care. It's up to you. Bottom line, good luck. These SharePoint exams represent quite a challenge and I look forward to hearing your thoughts, your experiences, your impressions. Feel free to shoot me an email, but also you'd be just as well by putting comments here at YouTube. I hope that this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.